Stanford University. Thank you, Carla. That was absolutely marvelous. As neuroscience reveals the working of neurons and the plasticity of the brain, our research reveals the importance of these concepts for students' motivation and achievement. All babies are eager to learn. You never see an unmotivated baby. It doesn't look right. This is what most babies are eager to learn and approaching the most daunting tasks of a lifetime with great gusto. Yet just a few years later, many students turn away from learning. In our work, we have shown that students' beliefs about their mind and its plasticity are key. In our work, we've shown that some students hold a fixed mindset about their intelligence. They think it's just a fixed trait, you have a certain amount, and that's that. This is the mindset that turns students away from learning because they're so worried about how much they have that learning takes a back seat. Other students have a growth mindset. They believe their intellectual abilities can be developed. They don't think everyone's the same or anyone can be Einstein, but they think that intelligence can be increased through effort, persistence, instruction, mentoring. These mindsets play a critical role in students' learning and in how they fare across difficult school transitions. In one study, my graduate students and I tracked hundreds and hundreds of low-income minority students across the transition to seventh grade, a very difficult transition, and one in which many students turn off to school. We found that those with the growth mindset quickly pulled apart from those who had a fixed mindset, and their grades, especially in math, diverged over the next two years. We then studied high-income students, pre-med students, at an Ivy League university on the East Coast. <laughs> And here, too, we found that those with the growth mindset outperformed those with a fixed mindset. In their organic chemistry course, the very challenging gateway to the pre-med curriculum. How does this happen? We used brain research, EEG, to find out. In one study, we brought students one at a time to our brainwave lab. We outfitted them with a cap full of electrodes that measured from different parts of their brain. We were especially interested in the part of the brain that told us they were harnessing their attention to receive important new information. We then seated them in front of a computer and asked them a long series of difficult questions. For each question, they typed in an answer. They then found out whether they were right or wrong, and then the computer told them the correct answer. When we analyzed the brain waves, we found that those with a fixed mindset entered a very strong state of attention to find out whether they were right, and that was it. But those with a growth mindset entered a strong state of attention to find out whether they were right or wrong, and then another very strong state of attention to find out what the right answer really was. When we tested them later on the items they had gotten wrong, those with the growth mindset scored significantly higher. They had corrected more of their errors because they cared about learning. Last week, in one of our uh, top journals, 
an article was published following up on this work and showing, again, that those with the growth mindset process error information far more deeply. That red indicates deep processing. And as a result, corrected their errors more and learned more. We then thought, what if we teach students a growth mindset? Would they learn more deeply? Would they achieve better? We put these questions to the test with many students making this difficult transition to seventh grade, many of whom were already showing declining achievement. Half of them got a study skills workshop, but half of them got study skills with a growth mindset. The growth mindset sessions kicked off with this article, you can grow your intelligence. New research shows the brain, what is it? New research shows the brain can be developed like a muscle. They learned that every time they pushed out of their comfort zone, stretched themselves to learn something new, their brains formed new connections. And over time, they could increase their intellectual ability. When we looked at their grades at the end of that year, we saw that those who had just learned the study skills important key study skills, but those who had just learned the study skills showed a continued decline in grades. But those who learned the growth mindset and study skills had the motivation to put those skills into practice. And as you'll see with the top line on the graph, they showed a significant rebound in their grades. I'd like to end by saying Every era is known by the way it views its children's intelligence. I grew up in an era that believed in fixed intelligence. In fact, my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Wilson, seated us around the room in IQ order. <laughs> you think it's funny. <laughs> In fact, in her view, some children had potential and some did not. The ones who did not, in her view, were not allowed to clap the erasers, wash the blackboard, carry the flag in the assembly, or take a note to the principal. What will our era be known for? I hope we'll be known for understanding the brain and how it works, and then using that knowledge to help all children fulfill their potential. Thank you. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.